everybody, I am Liz and today I am here to talk about the books I have read in September and October as I haven't gotten the chance to talk about them yet. Usually when I do a wrap up I also talk about my current reads, but because I talked about my current reads in my previous videos with my life and channel update, uh, if you want to know what I'm currently reading, check that video out. A will link it and whatever. But before we get into my wrap up, I want to do my daily check in. I want to do this every video to see how you guys are doing, how I'm doing. Today I am tired because I had a very, very early work meeting. So I need coffee and all the good sugary caffeinated things to keep me awake today. So my question for you today, please let me know in the comments how you are doing and if there's anything new in your life, anything new or different that you've done because I've done something different. On Saturday, I got my ear pierced. I haven't had my ears pierced like since I was 12. So this was different. But I'll show you. I got a little hoop. I don't know if you can see it. Right here. And I'm very happy, but it's a little red and pissed off and angry. Because, you know, it's healing. So, yay! <laughs> anyway, so let's get straight into the books. I've read a total of nine books throughout. And I mean by read, it finished. <laughs> a total of nine books throughout September and October. Six of those books were in September, three in October. And mind you, those six books I finished in September, I finished the first half of September before I left on my trip to California. The first book I finished, The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. Uh, this book is a favorite here on booktube. And... I didn't really like it. It felt tropey, it felt cliched, I couldn't connect with any of the characters. I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars. I do also have to say that I don't know what YA book started the craze for having a main character or a friend or some person in a book called Blue, but this book has it in there and I was just, I don't know, it just feels like a cliche now. I do have to say that the love interest was really cute and one of my favorite quotes ever and I'd probably gush if any person said this to me and it's just breathtaking. It says, Ruby, give me one reason why we can't be together and I'll give you a hundred why we can. And I'm like, the heart fluttering at that. Next, we have Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. This is meant to be a classic, really expresses the culture in America, especially with black people in like the 50s and even earlier on in like the 20s and everything. And I appreciate a lot of what I read about in here, but also I felt like this was an acid trip of a book. It left me confused and conflicted the whole time I was reading it. It's about this guy, his journey in life that led him from being a prominent person to a shadow in society. And it was... Like I said, it was interesting, but also so convoluted and messy and like an acid trip that just looking at the book makes my mind hurt. So I gave it a three out of five. Next we have The Alexander Cipher by Will Adams. This follows a slew of characters, multiple points of view. The main point of view is Daniel Knox. He's basically, his goal is to find 
Alexander the Great's tomb. He has fallen out of like the archaeological community due to scandals and so now he's like a tour guide in that Middle Eastern region around Egypt and he gets a clue to Alexander's tomb and pursues it. But there's a whole lot of other things going on. He's also like hunted by people because of things that happen and it's this weird like chase to the treasure but also like run away from guys chasing after me. I felt like way too much happened in this book and it switched points of view so often from characters that you don't really dive into anybody's mind and all of the men in this story are stereotypes. Like, bad. And the women too are all stereotypes. It was so painstakingly awful to trudge through this book. I'll be honest. It felt forced and especially the main character he was the only good guy in this whole book everyone else was sleazy sexist demanding a female body doesn't matter what the woman says I got money or I got power and I'm gonna take what I want it was so infuriating. Yeah, I gave it oh, like a 1.5 star, but the more I think about this story, the more I think it's a 1 out of 5. Next, we have Stronger, Faster, and More Beautiful by Arwen Ellis Dayton. Loved this book so, so much. It is phenomenal. It's a futuristic sci-fi novel which really dives into our humanity and our distancing between humanity and science and how far our science can go. It starts off with the story of two twins, both of their bodies are failing them for different reasons. Just shit luck and so they end up combining all organs into one body and it just goes off on like science running wild and what happens if we don't really look at the ethical ramifications of it. So it was very fascinating. It takes you through I believe six different stories in different periods of time in our knowledge of science and body modification and really like health modification. It was so interesting and intricate and beautiful and I do forever love this story. And I definitely recommend this story if you do like those types of really like brain thought processes of science and science fiction and short stories. I will give this Definitely a 5 out of 5. Next we have Monstrous Volume 2 titled The Blood. This book, even though the main storyline was better, I think in my opinion, to the first one. It wasn't as cliched. It still is left to be desired. One thing I did not particularly like about the format of this book is there's a few sections in it where it is story written. And those little text bubbles felt like they just distracted from the story and took away from the main story. The artwork is still breathtaking and so this still earns a 4 out of 5. Next we have Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. This book, I like don't even know what to say except the fact that I love it completely and totally adore this story. The only issue I ended up having in this story was just a little bit of the way the chapter one was written in the sense of giving us information on the main character. So essentially this book is about a girl named Lei who becomes a paper girl and in the story the demons are a part of the natural order of things. They are the higher up hierarchy. They have all the power in the kingdom and then there's so there's demons, half demons, and then humans and paper girls are humans that become the concubines of the emperor 
and it's very interesting. I loved, loved learning about the lore and how they set everything up with these animalistic demonoids. It was a fantastic journey. I love the story and it has LGBTQ rep with a female female romance. It was just, it was amazing. I loved it. And so it gets a 4.75 out of 5. This is another one I highly, highly recommend if you like fantasy, if you like diving into a different culture, as this is based off of an Asian culture. The main author comes from Malaysia and Chinese descent, and so it was just awesome. Next, I started Educated by Tara Westover. I started this book on the flight to California. I'm just amazed and impressed by Tara Westover's life. I have no idea how she survived everything that happened to her as a child. This book, even though I did enjoy it as a memoir, I did have a few issues with writing style and how things were constructed. And it also took me a long time to get through it. That is not in part of the author or the book in all means is totally all based upon me. I really enjoyed this book and I feel like it's a must read. It really kind of opens your eyes to the possibilities. So many things happen in this book and it really dives into identity and discovering yourself. There is huge chunks on physical, mental, emotional abuse in the story so do be wary of that. It definitely just deserves a 4 out of 5. Then I read through Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. Now, I've never read a Norse Mythology book. My knowledge on Norse Mythology is very limited. This really opened my eyes to a lot of things. I thought that Norse gods were better than Greek Roman gods in regards to how they interact with their thoughts on humanity and, you know, getting to Valhalla and everything like that. But no, they were still kind of assholes. Though I did love what I gained from reading this book, I'm not sure I loved the story overall because when I went into this book, I was expecting Norse mythology at a glimpse of how Neil Gaiman sees it and how he writes it and how he experiences North mythology. I wanted it to feel more like his other works that I've read in the past and it didn't, which fell flat for me, which sucked. And so I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. And lastly, the last book I finished in October was The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. And this book, again, this one's another one I absolutely loved. This one is slightly futuristic. It takes place, imagine a Disneyland, where instead of having the characters being people dressed up, the characters are actually androids. And so it has this conversation about what it means to be human because our main character, Anna, is charged with the murder of a kingdom employee who she claims she fell in love with. And it goes past and present. So it talks about her before, like when she meets Owen and all the days leading up to his death and then the trial and post-trial recordings. And it was so interesting. I definitely really, really enjoyed the story and how Jess Rothenberg put everything together. My only negative critique in the story is there is a plot twist that I saw a mile away. Even though I knew it was coming and I knew the ending of the story, millions and millions of pages before the end of the story. It still took me through a fantastic ride. I loved it. And so I am rating this book a 4.5 out of 5. So there we have the nine books I finished 
throughout September and October. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always if you have a thought inkling of what videos I should record in the future please let me know don't forget to tell me how you guys are doing and if there's anything new in your life i'd love to hear it in the comments down below and as always if you've read any of these books please tell me what you think about them and let's chat in the comments so until next time remember that i love you and i will see you soon